concept of uh, unicompartmental knee arthroplasty is restoration of the joint surfaces and retensioning of the ligaments. That's what I've learned over 20 years ago, and that's what we've been practicing the last three years. Last year, we did over 1,200 partial knee arthroplasties, and we always aim for reconstructing the physiological orientation of joint line in height and orientation, and we don't touch the medial collateral ligament. We keep it in the physiological length and tension and thereby just don't try not to disturb the kinematic envelope of the knee. If we do mechanical alignment, it is considered the gold standard, but 15 to 20% of patients are dissatisfied. And as a possible relationship to the joint, to the choice of technique, we have a conflict on soft tissue ligament tension as an abnormal joint line orientation and paradoxical movement. So this is what we're confronted with. But we know for over 10 years from Johann Bellemans, from his uh, study when he took uh, many uh, healthy individuals and took full length radiograph of their knees, that 90 degrees is really not the standard. There's a wide variation from nine degrees of varus to five degrees of valgus. And this is what we should be aiming for if we want to restore the knees. So there are issues to address. The ligament releases are a problem and it leads to, it leads to a soft tissue conflict and an alter, altered joint line orientation. And there's the, the conflict of um, implant shape. It leads to a paradoxical movement with the L ACL sacrificing total knee arthroplasties that we have today. So what we do is ligament referenced total knee arthroplasty. So we resect an orientation and there's the, the conflict of um, implant shape. It leads to a paradoxical movement with the L ACL sacrificing total knee arthroplasties that we have today. So what we do is ligament referenced total knee arthroplasty, total knee arthroplasty. So we resect the bone on the femur just to its predeceased state and reconstruct it with a metal implant. And then we transfer this to the tibia and re it results in a correct varus joint line that the patient had before. This concept was described as kinematic alignment by Stephen Howell many years ago. And the principles of kinematic alignment are just restoration of the native joint lines and restoration of the native laxity without ligament releases. So it's really the same thing we do with a partial knee replacement. So the principles of partial knee replacement, kinematic alignment and total knee kinematic alignment are in essence the same. There's good evidence now that 10 year survival is really good, despite the wide variation of tibia varus angles and the 10 year survival is over 97%. There's a big meta analysis now involving over 11 uh, RCTs, over 1000 patients, and it shows a clear trend towards better results for kinematic alignment. The second thing we want to address is paradoxical tibial translation. And we always have that if we sacrifice the ACL. And it has been shown in the literature in many studies. So what we do is we use a medial pivot implant, the GMK sphere total knee replacement. It gives us medial stability. It allows for movement on the lateral side and it combines constraint and stability. It's a real design advantage. And it comes very close to a unicompartmental knee arthroplasty with the medial ball and socket that we have for the Oxford. The GMK sphere ball and socket medial compart compart compartment uh, gives high stability throughout the range of motion. There is no paradoxical motion between femur and tibia, and especially there is no implant related mid flexion instability. And this has been shown in studies as well. There's a, a growing evidence uh, now 
including 25 studies in literature and several joint registries that medial uh, stabilized designs have equal uh, result if it comes to longevity to total knee arthroplasty designs. So from our point of view, it is ideal to com combine the two approaches, kinematic alignment with medially stabilized arthroplasty components. That's what we've been doing for over a year now with great results. And we apply the original kinematic alignment technique in combination with the sphere component. Kinematic alignment resurfaces the joint with no ligament release, no ligament conflict. It restores the joint line. The normal joint or, or, or line orientation can be maintained. And it's a true personalized approach and has the potential to improve patient outcomes. So the original KA technique really is unicompartmental knee arthroplasty with ligaments normal, no soft tissue releases, and we restore the native joint surfaces. And we can do the same technique now using a total knee arthroplasty component with a medial pivot with kinematic alignment. There is growing evidence with 12 RCTs now that kinematic alignment has a clinical outcome that is at least as good as mechanical alignment. There's a tr clear trend towards better functional outcome. There are no early stabilization issues, which has been confirmed by RSA, and a 10-year survival is encouraged.